Puccini Stosca is a very controversial opera. Composers and critics are not uh, so fond of this opera. A famous example are the, the uh, Gustav Mahler, uh, the composer, uh, and Fausto Torre Frank, and many very good t critics. They really said second-rate uh, uh, music, which I don't agree at all. Uh, Tosca is a, a huge masterpiece. <laughs> You can really easily do Tosca, dramatically. You can put it on the stage and it'll be fine. But there is so much in this piece, no. in, in music and text, and if you can just play that, you've got an entirely different type of Tosca. Okay? So that's what we're trying to do. I think Tosca is my favorite opera, uh, if I have to have one, simply because not only is the music absolutely wonderful, it's so well constructed, I mean, musically and dramatically. If you look at the Sadhu play on which it's based, uh, it's five acts long, um, rather unwieldy, and you get to the, the big final scene, of course, and it's, um, it's quite short. Uh, what it does, however, provide is a lot of background information uh, to the characters, which we don't necessarily get from Puccini and his librettists. Uh, but Puccini compacted all this into you know, a couple of hours of music uh, and musical characterization. So whereas you get the characterization in words, in Sadhu, you get it musically in Puccini. Um, it's like, you know, I trashed everything you represent. <laughs> Every great opera composer uh, is a great uh, dramatist. Uh, Mozart uh, knew how to, to write uh, using closed uh, forms, uh, using arias uh, and with uh, uh, recits uh, with, uh, with the cembalo. Then Verdi was uh, another great uh, dramatist uh, and uh, he wrote uh, without the cembalo but with many recitativi and uh, some closed arias. In the end of his career, even Verdi destroyed a little bit uh, the closed uh, areas. I think Puccini is uh, the ideal uh, connection between uh, old uh, opera and uh, new opera and the future, uh, if opera will have, uh, of, of what uh, opera uh, will be. <laughs> What is important uh, is uh, to find the essence uh, of a theater uh, without uh, uh, for forgetting that music uh, must be the most important thing 
in the, in the piece. What I've tried to do this time is to try and make it pretty clear what the situation was like in the Rome in which these characters lived. It was a Rome that was in turmoil, political turmoil. Um, Italy was in turmoil. Uh, Rome had just come through a, a very short-lived Roman Republic. The Pope was about to come back to Rome. Um, any um, suspected revolutionaries were being tortured, uh, arrested, shot, and people could be arrested very easily at that time. Some of the nobility were certainly implicated, um, and so we try and make it a pretty bloody Tosca, actually. Um, and against the background of this, we have this extraordinary opera about a prima donna, but of course it's an opera that's ultimately about a woman who gets uh, unwittingly involved in these events. Tosca, La Tosca. Si? What are the challenges of this role for you? For you? It's a long role. Oh, I've done worse. Did not? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> But it's uh, it's a great piece of theater for an actor. It's it's really great and it's great music. So so I love it. I really do. Love you've it. done it quite a bit. Yeah, and that was my 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 main uh, the opera I had in in my competition when I was in in a music school in the Paris Conservatory, and that was my final exam was Tosca. So she's a very old friend. Mm. <laughs> She is a very young person and she has been raised by nuns and she's been in Rome f just for three years when the opera begins. She's been working with the, the Pope's uh, countertenor who taught her how her technique and stuff like that. But she's not, she's not a girl from the city. She, she doesn't know about manners really. She knows how to behave in front of the Queen Carolina because that at least she learned. But mainly she's a girl from, from the hills in Verona and she, she has no social behavior whatsoever. So when she has to cheat, it's, it's instinctive, but she doesn't really know how to cheat. And the moment she has to be confronted to pain, to her lover's suffering, etc., etc., then she, she loses completely her temper, which would happen, I think, to almost anybody. Yeah. 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 So I know that. I know the line. So don't worry. Okay. I, I, you still help hold me for the first carnet. Carnet fiche. And then carnet fiche will do something like. Okay. <laughs> that's right. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you, you'll, you'll that, that's a signal to yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Her best quality is, I think, her love, her, her capacity of love and uh, of pity, of compassion, sympathy and empathy with uh, suffering. And, and that's very close to what I am too, so I think that's why I like her.
also a tenor who, having started out, maybe almost like um, when he's at college, you know, starting out with a political cause, has now, now there's been a Roman Republic. He's now gone a lot further uh, in being very upfront and outspoken about it. So he's a, he's a serious suspect. Marcus um, Cavallarossi has, of course, his own challenges. Uh, I think of Reconda, uh, Recondita Armonia, which, of course, is the first aria that you sing. Is, um, is this a difficult piece to start an opera with? Yeah, that's just rude. <laughs> <laughs> to, to start with the Recondita Armonia, because everyone is waiting for it. Everyone wants to know, can the tenor do the B-flat? Does he have all of the chops for it? You know, and it's like, and then it finishes and they don't know whether they're supposed to clap or not because the music keeps going and the tenor is left there to wonder whether they liked him or not the whole evening. <laughs> I really don't approach Cavaradossi as a character too many different ways. Um, he's, he's pretty well placed as he is. And then the only thing we bring to it that might alter that character is ourself, is our own personality. We bring that to it. And that changes. Sometimes it changes with our moods. Sometimes I don't feel as youthful. And so I won't have a Cavaradossi that's as youthful. And Sometimes it depends on my colleagues and maybe we have a different rapport and it creates a different response from me as a person which influences the character. Um, I, th I don't honestly spend a whole lot of time thinking about Cavaradossi simply because for me he's so straightforward. Uh, there's not, for me there's a, not a whole lot that that one can do. There's not a lot of, it, the development of the characters is outlined as perfectly as it can be. Cavaradossi is being tortured and what's the worst thing you could do to a painter or someone that, that uses his hands as a livelihood albeit he's a nobleman, he probably has money and maybe doing this on the side, but very important to him is his painting and he's doing this, uh, you know, for the church, is to break his hands, to make, th render them completely useless. <laughs> and it totally destroys him as a person, completely. So, you know, to if to torture me, to hit me in the face, or I don't know, waterboard me, or whatever you might want to do, would only go so far. But if you tried to do something to remove my voice, that would be the worst thing someone could do to me. And I think that with, with the Cavaradossi, that it's the same thing. Is there a moment of yours that's your favorite in this opera that you really identify with? As a woman, I think it would be the moment when Scarpia tries to rape her. 
this is very, that happened to me. And so every time it's like a kind of, of um, a kind of treatment, like, like a shrink treatment, you know? Yeah, Absolutely. I think that's the worst, almost the worst thing that can happen to a human being, being raped. And uh, Escarpia says, you know, he can he can have two at once. He can get rid of uh, get rid of uh, Cavaradossi, have him on the gallows, and uh, and have Tosca as well. Most of the time I'm doing things that people don't do or wish they could do or um, and, I, and I sort of go to that space as well. A lot of the characters I find, and I approach it this way too, is, is that they're from, from external process, they, they're, they seem uh, evil, bad people. But a lot of the guys that I play are narcissistic and feel justified and feel like they're doing the right thing. So if you play bad, then I don't think it's quite as successful as someone who believes he's doing some good, despite his, his sort of left turn, especially with Scarpia, despite his left turn uh, with chasing Tosca, that I think it's a much more interesting character that, that despite it all, he thinks he's doing something really good. And I mean, he's convinced because he's connected to the church, he's connected to the queen, of course he's doing something good. How could he be bad? You seem to be particularly enjoying yourself as, uh, towards the end of the Tadeo. Yeah. <laughs> Since it was almost pornographic. Well, he's, you know, he's unleashed at that point, and it's, it's a glimpse into the depravity of the character. And it is, it is what it is. I mean, he says at one point, Tosca, you make me forget God in the midst of the Tadeum, um, which uh, for someone who's twisted, you know, that's also... Um, this whole the, being in the church setting, but yet feeling this lust and, and one is feeding the other and it just sort of builds and builds and builds. <laughs>
are, are you pleased that there is a Facebook page called Greer Grimsley is an Opera God? All right. Well, let me, it, it is, I mean, you, you can't but be flattered by someone who's, who's inspired to start a Facebook page with that title. I had nothing to do with it. Um, That's what we wanted to hear. Yeah, no, I had nothing to do with it. And actually, my daughter found this um, and then joined and told me about it. So, no, I, I mean, it's, it, it is incredibly flattering, and, uh, and I think it's very sweet for all those people to have, have uh, yeah. entered into that Facebook. That's kind of neat. Yeah. Yeah. We have something like 20, is it 25 supers in uh, the cast of this Tosca. They range from um, being cardinals and, and, and priests, um, Swiss guards, to being part of the firing squad, to being the Sbirri or uh, the spies of Scarpia. And it's not an easy job. Uh, they're pretty high profile. Most of them, not all of them, but most of them are. Come lunga l'attesa, perché indugialo ancora. The firing squad is a difficult job because a lot of the time you don't have people with military training. And I have no military training. Uh, but, you know, this is something that has to look dramatic, it has to work musically, and it has to be, above all, safe. Well, you know, we're not using um, rifles, you know, which are, which are, are seriously charged. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're, you know, they're, they're, they have a, um, a, a charge in them, a blank. Um, you know, there has been the occasion when people have been hurt by it. So, you know, they have to be pretty sure that they're not firing directly at the thing they're concerned. So it's a responsible job. Shoot. He doesn't stand up. I've AD'd on so many productions of Tosca. And my job was always to um, train the firing squad. And uh, so this time I decided that Kutura was going to have the pleasure of doing that. And she's done a great job, I have to say, with them. And uh, no, she doesn't, uh, she doesn't let them off lightly. Well, I'll take this off of Wayne, okay? But on his nod, watching your periphery, he'll nod, and we do a right face, feet together, grab the top of your gun and stick the butt on the ground. And then our second position was changed. What was that? He takes his hand to his sword, and we took a step forward. With our left, we lifted our gun to a 45 degree angle so you went up in the air, guys, up in the air, up in the air. So that if it went off, it would shoot up, it wouldn't shoot at. And this is where we cock it. It's not like I'm really going to die, but there is a sense of this is awful, what's about to happen. Because I really, I'm feeling it. Not just standing there, okay, they're going to shoot, I'm going to fall down. But there's a whole sense with that music that builds up to it. And if you're listening to it, and if you're in the character, you find yourself hoping your heart doesn't stop, you know, because they, they fire those weapons, and, you know, you, you suddenly, whoa, and every picture you've ever seen by some war correspondent or somebody sort of flashes through your mind at that moment, and you go, wow, you know, could it be like that? I think uh, even uh, Tosca is uh, the beginning of the Italian verismo. What uh, he, he wrote uh, anticipates the way, to, way of writing uh, of Mascagni, of um, uh, Giordano, uh, of Leoncavallo, because uh, the action uh, is uh, king.
And the music is not just a comment, uh, but is uh, extremely connected to what is happening on the stage. That uh, for this reason, we can say that uh, Tosca is the first uh, opera that uh, introduces uh, verismo. Puccini, in the last years uh, of his life, uh, said, uh, I have been touched by God, who told me, write uh, music, but write music only for uh, the theater. And uh, this is what uh, I feel. <laughs> Okay, so make me proud here, fellas. Don't shoot me. Totally. <laughs> Don't think I won't use it. Hmm? Don't think I won't use it. Oh, we know you will. We want to be the tag at the end. Okay. <laughs>